So a couple days ago I came across this amazing website guys. I really loved exploring this one. This is I think the official website of Lama Lama. It's a digital agency and what I really love about this website is the cursor animation. This is so cool. So today that's what we are dealing with. We will create this GUI effect while moving your cursor you will have this cursor animation one more thing while clicking on the cursor you will get this animation so what we are dealing with is just html css and javascript in addition to that we will use gsap also and that's it Coyotech. Right, creative minds, welcome to the first video of Koyatech. This is your ultimate destination for innovative coding and design inspiration. So I'm Dagi, I'm the CEO and the creative developer at Koyatech. In this exciting new video channel, we will explore the fascinating world of coding and design, combining them in ways that will spark your creativity and elevate your projects so this is why guys you should subscribe to this channel because every week we will explore a real world project so guys i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like subscribe and comment down below if you enjoyed this tutorial so without any other words guys let's go so this is guys the starter folder so guys you can find the link in the description so you can clone this folder the starter folder so that's what we are dealing with you can find three folders this is the css the base.css the image and the javascript folders so the base.css we will fill it but before that i have to explain the javascript file uh, the uh, index.html i'm sorry so guys if you have just started the the web development you can check what jsap could do this is a powerful library okay so right now we are going to this is the index.html guys so so guys let me tell you this is the body element that we are going to work on it so also guys there is a div which is so important the cursor this one so this div that will give us all of this work so the cursor inner is just a cursor inner box element come here so this is what we are going to work on it in javascript so it will convert what we will code in javascript and transform it to html guys i have to explain everything in details so you everyone could understand what i just did okay so this is the cursor inner element come here this one it means that there is a javascript that we will work on it we will add it not right now next also guys this is a filter svg filter okay so i will explain it in details right now so this one the devs tag this is a container element where you define reusable reusable elements such as filters or gradient that can be used later in the svg content okay so guys other thing the filter id id i just added an id for this filter it's very simple so guys after that i there is a gaussian blur this is an effect we will use it so this line applies a gaussian blur effect to the source graphic so guys for color matrix we will use this filter also guys uh, this is uh, this line applies a color matrix transformation 
to the blurred image stored in the blur variable this transformation changes the colors of the image guys everything i think right now is so simple there i did nothing hard or so, something like that also guys for the composite this line performs a composite operation that combines the original source graphic with the altered go image using the a top operator so operator means that the altered go image will be placed on top of the original source graphic where they overlap so guys till now i think everything is clear so let's move on to the css we are going to work on the design so as you can see right here we have the two texts so we have to work on them and we will work on our background including the background image too so let's go to our css file and first thing first let's select all the elements uh, uh, of the uh, html file including uh, the uh, there after and there before we're gonna give this the box sizing and we will give it the border box so what we are going to do is to uh, give uh, what we are going to do right now is to make sure uh, width and the height of each element calculations including the uh, their content padding and borders simplifying layout and sizing calculations in CSS uh, right now what we are going to do is is to create a uh, custom properties so within the root pseudo class the custom properties can be used throughout uh, the CSS so that's what we are going to do right now so we will use the root and first thing first the font size we will give it 14 pixels second thing we will create our custom text color we're gonna give it the black we're gonna create custom background color we will give it a f2 f1 db we will work also on the page padding we're gonna give it one rem also we have columns so this custom property guys uh, we will use it on our uh, javascript not right now but later so you're gonna see the result so also right now we have the cursor blend mode friends and the cursor radius to zero Alright, so that's what we have so far. So this is our custom uh, properties. So first of all, let me split this window. So guys, the reason I have a class right here on the body section is because that we have different demos for uh, this uh, cursor animation. So what we're gonna do right now is gonna get work on our class demo so guys you have the ability to all these properties it could be on the body section but as i told you guys that i have different demos so this is why i'm gonna work with it, this one so we will use the color text we're gonna give it the c b c so this is the color and we will use the color background cursor five C A F C one 
precursor blend mode occlusion and of course we have two colors for our ingredients next one so I'm gonna give it this is the color and actually I'm gonna copy and paste to save time I'm gonna use the second color which is I'm gonna use for this one the RGB so right now we are going to, I'm gonna work on my body section first thing first let's give a margin zero a color we're gonna use the var function and use our custom property the color text the background color I'm gonna give the var color background font family source code pro and mono space improve the font rendering uh, is a web kit based browsers so we're gonna use the web kit font smoothing multi -adjust. and the second thing is for firefox actually this is the same property but uh for different browser which is firefox we will use the gray scale i'm gonna import my background right here image and i'm gonna use the url function to import it i'm gonna go to image background okay i think everything is okay right now so what we gonna do right now is to give size for our background so the background size is cover and the background to ensure that we are uh, that our image is uh, in the center we're going to use the 50 percent up and down and 50 percent uh, right and left so i'm going to use the height of 100 if you height one last thing which is the overflow is hidden what i'm gonna do right now is working on the content class so the content first thing first i'm gonna give a padding zero up and down and i'm gonna use the var function so i'm gonna use my custom property the page padding and display flex flex direction columns the width i'm gonna give it 100 view width actually guys this will help us a lot i'm gonna use the minimum height of 100 view height the position relative position relative and the justify content center i'm gonna use the align items to so the justify content we used it to make it in the center of the height and this uh, align items i'm gonna use it to make the text in the left okay so what i'm gonna use right here is the font I'm gonna use the font family the this gray cliff is actually so great i worked on it with it uh, on different uh, projects so the font weight i'm gonna give it 300 i'm gonna we're gonna use the regular one okay so what we're gonna do right now is to work on our h2 right here so this text so i'm gonna use the content first thing first let's give a size for our font font size 
I'm gonna use the 60 view width and I'm gonna use the line height I'm gonna give it one the margin zero the pointer event I'm gonna give it a none and I'm gonna work on the bug to make this uh, so what you're gonna do is this technique I'm gonna give first the background uh, color so I'm gonna use the var I have the custom property of the gradient text one so what you're gonna do right now is the background color also I'm gonna work with the var too I'm gonna use the background image right here so we're gonna use the linear gradient and we are gonna give it 45 degree we are going to use the var gradient text one and the var gradient text two right now i think that everything is okay this like that to make our background so what we're gonna do right here is to make the background color for the text repeat so we're gonna use the uh, background repeat property and we're gonna repeat it we're gonna use the webkit pack for the background clip webkit background clip we're gonna use the webkit text fill color and we're gonna give it text uh, transparent and we are going to use the other properties for Firefox we're gonna use this most background clip and the text fill color transparent so this is what we have so far so we used the webkit to uh, make the background color actually is the the color of the text right now we are going to work on our uh, b tag this one so we are going to start the content b and first thing first let's give a margin for the zero 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 and we are going to use the max width property gonna give it 13 ch and font weight 400 so we're gonna use the font size and we're gonna use the clamp function so guys i'm gonna explain why we used this clamp so the reason i used this clamp because that we are work on the responsiveness of this uh, of uh, of this text so what is these parameters so the first one is 1.5 rem so is the maximum value and the two viewport so it's the preferred value which is uh, relative to the viewport width so it's two percent of the viewport width and the two rem is the maximum value so this is the minimum value the maximum value and this is the preferred value so what we are going to do right now is to work on the settings for our font settings first of all we're gonna use the weight i'm gonna give it 400 and the other one is the optical size i'm gonna give it 72 and the italic to zero we just set it to zero we're gonna give the pointer events none also i think that right now we have this result this is so far what we just 
did so I think everything is in this place so what we're gonna do right now is to create right now we are going to work on this cursor on this uh, container this div so gonna use it. so we're gonna give it a height of 100% the position fixed and the width 100% we're gonna give the left zero the top zero we're gonna use the pointer event none also and the z index we're gonna give it 99 to make sure that is on the front of all of these elements right now what we're gonna do is use the mix blend mode and we're gonna work with the bar function and we're gonna use our custom property the cursor blend mode okay so i think i misspelled this one so this one okay i think that everything right now is on his place right now we're gonna use the size we're gonna use the calc function uh, what we're gonna do is to divide uh, the uh, width with uh, on the columns so this is how we gonna use the this size okay so the 100 view width divided by the columns number of columns that uh, this one is a custom property so guys you have uh, you you know that this columns is actually 15 so we just used it right here on the root so right now i think let's copy and paste this one the display grid and the grid template columns we're gonna use the repeat we're gonna use the var function also we're gonna use the columns and also the var the size as we have right here right now so that that we have 15 columns and each column have this size so guys this is why we use this size property right now right here and i think right now we are going to work on the class we're gonna use it not not right now we're gonna use it on the javascript file so we are going to name this one is the cursor inner box we're gonna use the width we're gonna give it the var of we have the size the height i'm gonna use the background and we're gonna use the our custom property which is the cursor call cursor background which is this one the blue we're gonna use the opacity zero that doesn't appear right now we will use the border radius and we have our custom radius cursor radius all right so i think that everything is clear so one more thing that we are going to do is to make everything responsive so what we're gonna do right now we will use the media query and we will use the screen and the minimum width is 53 am and we will use the root we will work on the our custom properties so it will have for the big screens so 30 columns and the padding we the page padding we're gonna give it to rem all right guys so i think that we missed the screen it deleted okay so i think that everything is clear right now so what we're gonna do also is working on the content is and we're gonna make it the align item center 
so i think that we have a problem right here so i think i missed this one right now what we have actually is the text is in the center of the uh, page all right guys so right now we are going to create this animation this amazing animation for, for our cursor so what we're gonna do first is to create the uh, first first thing first we have to create our javascript file we will name it utils so what we gonna have right here is two functions one to return the mouse position and one to return the window width and height this file it plays the role of utility module in javascript project so what we're gonna do right now is to create our first function so we will name it the uh, get mouse pose and we will have return the x e the client x and the y e dot client y so this function is to return an object with x and y so what actually this function does so this function takes an event object as an argument and it returns uh, an object with x and y these are representing the current horizontal and vertical position of the mouse cursor within the viewport so the next thing that we are gonna make is the next function which is the get win size actually this function doesn't have an argument so it will return the width so we're gonna use the window inner width and the height in the height we're gonna use the window dot inner height okay so one last thing is to export our get mouse pose and win size all right so what we're gonna do right now is to create uh, our uh, cursor uh, file javascript file we have to animate our cursor so we will create a file named cursor.js first of all we need to import our functions from the utils.js so we're gonna use these two and the second one is the get win size from utils I'm gonna name it utils.js guys okay what we're gonna do right now is to uh, initialize the mouse position object so we go to assign to mouse position the x and y mouse positions so what we're gonna do next is to update the mouse pose the mouse position with the current position all right so we're gonna use a function we will call it update mouse pose so we'll have So what we are gonna do next is to listen for the mouse move and the pointer move we will use the event listener so window dot add event listener and we will assign the update mouse this is the first one and for the second one is to add 
event listener for the pointer move We, are, we have right now the update mouse position and we will assign it to the mouse move and also we have the uh, update mouse uh, position and we will assign it to the pointer move also so uh, right now we have something else we will use another parameter passive is true update mouse pose function will be called when the pointer is moved the passive true this one is is included uh, which is optimization hint for the browser so that when the passive is set to true it tells the browser that the event listener will not prevent scrolling and allowing for smoother performance when scrolling while the pointer is moving initialize the window size object wind size get wind size for the next thing that we are going to do we will use an event listener and we will recalculate the window size on a resize event so we will use the event listener window add event listener resize so the win size is equal to get win size function we have two things to fix the code so we have uh, we use the big u okay we will use those things one other thing to fix so the p this this one and we have this true course what we're gonna do right now is to create a class so we're gonna use export class cursor and first thing to uh, initialize our DOM so we're gonna use we're gonna initialize the main DOM the element we're gonna give it a null so the inner to is null and the cells to null also so we give the element the inner and the cells the null so to uh, tell the javascript that we are going to change these uh, variables not right now but later in the in the code so what we're gonna do next is to use the cell size the rows columns and we will give a settings that we are going to use this settings in our gsap work so we will give a time of 0.2 also so that's it so right now we are going to work on our constructor So we are going to give the uh, current DOM element, the DOM element that is initialized in uh, in the first uh, uh, right here. Okay, so what we are gonna do right now to use this dot DOM dot element and give it a DOM element okay so we're gonna use the cells wrapper element that gets the svg filter applied we're gonna use also this dot dom inner this dot on dot element dot query query selector and we're gonna give the class of cursor inner Alright, so what we're gonna do right now is to assign the uh, the time of the settings to to a DOM element. So what we're gonna do right now is working on this dot settings dot ttl is equal to DOM get attribute data ttl 
SR, it will assign the default time to the settings. So one other thing to fix is the constructor, this part. Everything is okay. So what we're gonna do right now is to get the cell at the position of the cursor. So we are going to create a function called get cell at at cursor and first of all we have some calculation to do so the first thing is the column index we're gonna use the math dot floor the mouse pose dot x divided by this dot cell size so what we actually did is determine the column index right now and for the next thing is determine the uh, the row index will give us of course also the math floor function and we will use the mouse pose y divided by the cell size also i will copy and paste okay so one more thing is to determine the cell index so what we're gonna do is to um to uh, the row index we will mul multiply it with uh, the number of columns and we will add the column index so we will use the const cell index index is equal to the row index we will multiply it with this dot columns and we will add the column index i think right now everything is okay so we're gonna create a condition so if the cell index is superior or equal to this dot cells total it will give us the cell index or or the cell index is inferior than zero so what we gonna have a console log and it will tell us the cell index out of bounds and it will return null so what we gonna do right now this function will return this dot dom dot cells and it will give us the cell index of course guys this uh this get cell at cursor it will it will be inside the class so right now i think everything is okay so guys what we're gonna do right now is to define who are the cell size and this dot column so what we're gonna do right now is to create our layout function so layout function and we first of all we will uh, assign this uh, this dot columns so we will use this dot columns and we will assign it assign the uh, property value of the custom property columns and next we will get the get computed style so this function is used to retrieve the computed styles of an element so guys right now let's code this line and this dot dom element and get property value of the custom property columns so i think that everything is okay right now so we just assign to this dot columns this 
uh, what we have right here so guys if you remember that we worked on the CSS and uh, gave it in the root that the columns are 15 so we are going to work uh, on this number right here so what we have next is to calculate the cell size so to calculate the size we have we have to divide the div uh, on the columns and we have the cell size so we will use this dot uh, cell size cell size equal to win size dot width we will divide it with this dot columns one more thing to calculate is the rows so we will calculate this dot rows is equal to math dot seal uh, divide the height on the cell size then we will get the rows so win size dot height we will divide it with this dot cell size so we will right now calculate the total amount of the cells so we will multiply the rows to the columns and we will get the cells total so what we are going to do this dot cells total is equal to this dot rows we will multiply it with this dot columns so one more thing we have to do so we will insert this this cells total to a cursor inner box element inside the cursor inner element so what we are going to do is we will use the let inner string is equal to nothing and we will erase the contents using this dot dom inner dot inner html equal to okay so what we are going to do is to create a custom color attribute so and we will assign the data custom color to the custom colors attribute so what we are going to do right now is uh, create a custom color colors attribute custom colors attribute and we will assign to this the element and get attribute custom colors also guys we have to declare custom colors array custom colors what we are gonna do right now is also to set the custom colors total to zero total zero and right now we will have a condition so if there is a custom colors attribute so the code it and we will i will explain it what i just did colors equal to custom colors attribute colors attribute okay so what we gonna do right now is to assign this dot dom element get attribute and the custom colors split with comma the comma right here the custom colors total array then dot length or 
zero okay so what we just did right here guys is to determine the array so because guys the the array we're gonna use it in the next loop for also guys we used the custom colors total to assign the uh, custom colors array that we we've got from this uh, this part so uh, uh, if we have uh, this uh, condition so then the custom colors array will get the length from the custom colors array if we have three colors four colors or something like that and if not it will we will get uh, the zero okay then we will uh, get the custom array custom colors array and we will use it in the loop function so what we are going to do right now is to render what we uh, have so what we are going to do right now is to cre create a for loop zero i is inferior than the totals it will get plus plus i then the inner str the custom colors total is equal to zero then so what we have right here is a loop that generates and append html content to a string named inner str so uh, based on certain conditions so here is what's happening in this loop so the loop checks whether the custom colors total is equal to zero so if the custom colors is zero it generates a div element with a class cursor inner box and appends it to the inner str so this is done by using the ternary operator so to provide two different html content options based on the condition so what we have the first condition will be the div we will create a div A class of the cursor inner box and, and the second condition is we go into append another div and of course it will have a some transformations I think that so what we're gonna do right now is to use the back tick what we have to do is create a div uh, with the style and we will use the transform scale we will use the uh, dollar sign create a javascript inside the uh, html file so we will use the preset utils dot random so we will use also the background is we will use the dollar sign again we will use we will use the custom colors array and we will use also the math dot or uh, math dot round we use the Utils, random and we will use zero custom colors attribute uh, custom colors total minus one also we will use a class equal to the cursor inner box class and we will close our div okay 
okay so right now i think that this line is okay so let me check what we're gonna do right now is to after this loop we are going to assign to the uh, inner html the inner string so done inner inner html is equal to inner str and for the next one the cells we gonna uh, assign to the cell cells the children so inner str just like that one. okay so the next line is this but dom cells is equal to this dot dom inner children so guys we have missed this thing right here for the class okay all right so we have something to fix is right here i uh, we missed the s and also guys i think yeah right here i think there is an double n for the inner box so right now i think everything is okay so what we're gonna do right now is to create another function init event so this function the role of uh, of this function is really actually to initiate all the events so first line we will use the event listener to resize on this layout so what we're gonna do right now is to use the window add event listener resize this layout all right so this is the first line so this event listener is attached to the resize event on the window object so when the window is resized so uh, uh, it calls the uh, this layout method this is what we uh, need to recalculate and adjust the layout of the elements in response to changes in the window size so what we're gonna do next is show and hide cells on mouse move or pointer move events so we're gonna use the uh, the handle move so we're gonna create a new function which is the handle move okay and first of all we need to check uh, which cell is being hovered so this is the first thing that we are going to do right now so we are going to uh, use a cell we will name uh, we will name the variable we will, we will call it cell so and we will assign it assign the get cell at cursor so this line it checks which element is being hovered over uh, using the uh, this dot get cell out cursor function so if the cursor is not over any cell or if the cached cell is the same as the current cell it turns early which uh, means no further action is taken so there is another condition so if a different cell is hovered over it updates the this cached cell property to store the current cell it uses the uh, the gsap animation library to set the opacity to the cell from uh, from zero to one and making making it visible so uh, it then uses the gsap uh, again to set the opacity of the cell back to zero after a delay specified by this dot settings dot ttl so uh, this could be used for fading out the cell after a certain amount of time so what we're gonna do is right now to code what we just talked right now so if 
this cell is equal to null or this cached cell is equal to cell drill return so to cache it we will use the this dot cached cell is equal to cell and we will use the first thing to uh, we have to change the opacity from 0 to 1 so using a tree set we're gonna use the set so what we're gonna set we will set the cell and we will make its opacity opacity to 1 and we will use the tree dresap dot set cell also and we will uh, and it, it it will set it back to zero after a certain delay so we have the delay that we already declared before so we will use it right now in the dresap so right now we will use the opacity parameter and the delay is equal to this dot settings dot ttl so right now i think we finished the uh, function so what we're gonna do right now is to assign the uh, the mouse move uh, the handle move to the mouse move so what we're gonna do right now is window add event listener to the mouse move mouse move using handle move and the second one is window dot add event listener we will use the pointer move and it will handle the move handle the move and of course we will use the passive true to optimize the rendering so right now i think we finished the initial uh, the uh, event uh, initialization so what we are going to do is to add these functions to uh, to the constructor so we will get uh, this dot layout and the other one is this dot init events so this is a function so i think right now we are done with our cursor dot gs so right now the last part of this video is we are going to create the index dot gs and what we're gonna do in the index first of all is to import our class our goo cursor so the goo cursor from cursor.3s all right so what we gonna do right now is to assign the selector uh, we are going to assign the class dot cursor to cursor dot el so we are going to work uh, with it next so right now we are going to create the cursor We'll name it cursor element document query selector and we are going to select the cursor class so first of all what we need to do right now is to initialize the cursor we are going to use the const we're gonna give the go new go cursor and we have the parameter which is the cursor 
PL. We can see what we have so far. All right. So guys, let's test it. I hope it works. All right. It actually works, guys. Okay. So what we are going to do right now is on click we have the animation that uh, this amazing animation we are going to work uh, we are going to use the dresap uh, we will use the dresap so guys this is the last part of this video so guys one last thing that right now we are going to work with the tree sap so what we're gonna do right now is to create an event listener uh, which is the click so guys what we gonna do we will use as i told you the tree sap and we will use the parameters the timeline the add level the dot to and stuff like that that's so easy guys and let's start okay so we will create a uh, event listener we will use the click and what will happen on the click so guys so we will use the tree sap i will explain right guys so i think right now is okay so we missed this one so guys what we have right now is the this dress up so we are going to break down what this code does step by step so okay so let's start so the event listener so this code adds an event listener so uh, uh, to the window object listening to uh, for a click event so for a click handle function when click event occurs the code inside the row uh, the arrow function is executed so on click this all of this function so it's it's going to work so first of all so we are going to uh, to uh, talk about this address app timeline so this address app dot timeline is a function so uh, it is used to create a timeline for a timeline um, used to a sequence and orchestrate animations so we used the um, for the first animation so uh, we used the two method is used to animate elements with the class go uh, go dot dom dot cells so the animation includes a duration so we set a duration for uh, our animation and to ease we use the ease this one so the ease function for the animation is power 4 so there is too many thing, uh, things so there is the power 1 and the power till power 4 so uh, we used also the opacity the opacity of the element is uh, of the element is animated to 1 from 0 to 1 and the stagger so stagger this thing is uh, to create a staggered animation effect so we used from it calculates the starting index based on the cell under the cursor and the each 
uh, element is animated with a delay of uh, 0.02 uh, I think it's 2 milliseconds I think so the grid this one is the animation is applied in a grid pattern based on the number of rows and columns specified so we have talked guys about these columns so we uh, talked about these columns in the css before so i'm not gonna talk about it right now so for the second animation so we used this part so this is a start uh, it means that we are in the zero seconds so next the dot two is this is the second animation so we set the duration the duration of this animation to one second and we used the is function to uh, for the animation uh, and we used the power one and also we set back the opacity to zero and we used the stagger so this is similar to the first animation it creates a staggered effect but with a longer delay we used three milliseconds and we used also uh, the grid and this is a uh, the animation is applied in a grid pattern based on the number of the rows and the columns so guys one last thing so uh, this is <coughs> this is guys of course it will happen after the uh, start we talked about that this one is a zero seconds and this one is a 0 0.3 milliseconds so this is what will happen after the three milliseconds guys this is the end i hope you enjoyed this video guys don't forget to like this video but before that we need to test what we have right here all right so right now that's what we have course the animation still doesn't work so we will of course find this problem right now all right so I think that we have a problem right here so this is a function guys and this is a add level okay so I hope everything works no so guys i think uh, i misspelled this one i think it's a zero not an o excuse me so all right guys so i think there is a, an extra r right here in this stagger right here okay we're gonna remove the r there is another misspelling right here so i think it's a off right here also so let's test okay it's actually working correctly so let's test it guys together so this is finally the result i'm happy that we ended this uh this amazing animation this cursor animation so guys i hope you enjoyed this video let's test it of course it's actually working it's working correctly so guys one more thing so if you want to change the uh, the uh, size of these cells all all you need to do is working on these columns you will use the 30 these columns is going to be right here uh, all all you need to do is going to the base.css and to go to media screen right here and change the number of columns how about 50 let's test it okay so let's give it a try okay 
it's actually a bit smaller than before and it's working guys i hope you enjoyed this video don't forget to like subscribe and comment down below if you enjoyed this tutorial guys the next week i have a another effect for you so we are going to deal with advanced uh, front end as i told you so that's it for today and see you next time